All right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I want to thank you guys. And before I jump into my presentation, I would like to uh, thank Adobe uh, and also thank um, uh, all the participants who uh, decided to come to this presentation. And just to give you a brief uh, um, description of who I am and, and what this talk is going to be about, uh, my name is uh, George Murphy. And I'm a contractor, and I've been working with uh, Adobe Cold Fusion since version four or five. And I'm also uh, a member of uh, Team Coldbox. And here is my um, email address. Uh, so you're you're welcome to reach out to me if you if you're having any uh, issues with the. Uh, uh, the product that I'm uh, uh, speaking on today, or if you just want to talk to me about anything, anything else, I'm uh, open to that. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to talk about Command Box Pro today. And Command Box Pro, for those of you who don't know, is a professional version of, uh, of uh, the Ortus uh, uh, company. And Command Box is a tool that allows developers to spin up uh, any flavor of uh, Adobe Cold Fusion or any other uh, uh, version of Cold Fusion. And with the Pro version of uh, Command Box Pro, you get uh, some interesting features and some features that are great for companies because uh, uh, most companies won't uh, uh, deal with products that don't have uh, an SLA. And you do get an SLA with Command Box Pro. And you also get a, a service manager module. And <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, a service manager module is a module that allows you to auto start your uh, your application or uh, auto start uh, uh, you know Adobe Cold Fusion and for the Windows folks that's in your service manager and for the Linux uh, folks that is uh, that is a system CTL um, uh, module built into your application uh, you also, the cool, cool feature about this product is the fact that you, you're only limited about for the number of sites you can create to the hardware on your server. What does that mean? It means that if I'm running 64 gigs of RAM or 32 gigs of RAM or 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, depending on um, each app that I want to run, uh, I can I can run it from. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is, you can run as many sites as your hardware will stand. Uh, and it has automatic uh, JDK management. Uh, I know for a lot of us uh, that's a huge issue sometimes, particularly if you're using the um, the uh, CA search file inside of there and you are running your um, your admin on SSL and that JDK gets overridden and you had some uh, certs in there, well, things stop working. Well, having this auto automatic JDK management tool will allow you to deal with that. And with every version of Command Box Pro, you get a uh, ForgeBox account, which will allow you to be able to uh, take your uh, product and deploy it as you see fit. Uh, you know, you can install it uh, directly on your server, to, you know, as long as you have a connection out to the internet. And even if you don't have a connection to the internet, you can save it as a file and then physically move it to where you need to move it to. Um, so what is Command Box Pro? What do you get? you get professional support. And that's very, very important, important because if you are run into some difficulties and you need someone to help you, the team is there to help you. 
you get a business level SLA, and you get a, a, a battle tested web server and Java server. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, and the beauty of this is, is that you can decide uh, what level of um, uh, uh, server you want. You want Ubuntu, you want uh, uh, Red Hat, you know, it depends on you. You get uh, support for underlying CFML engines. You get, this is a feature that's not developed yet, but you get a multi-server dashboard and that will be out soon. And you also have the, your choice of uh, having uh, your cache extension that you want. Do you want, uh, do you want Redis? Do you want Couchbase? Uh, do you want MongoDB? You will get uh, one cache extension for each license of Command Box Pro that you get. And you get uh, the automatic uh, update checker, which is uh, part of uh, uh, Command Box now. You also can, you're not limited to de deploying uh, uh, ColdFusion sites. You can do JavaScript apps. You can deploy HTML. Uh, if you have the, um, the .NET SDK, you can, you can deploy .NET applications. A lot of different things you can do with it. You can, uh, and uh, this is my favorite, is uh, the ability to deploy CFML apps. And I'm not just going to talk about this today. I'm going to actually spin up a server for you using Terraform. And I'm going to share all of that information with you. Uh, you get what's called a, a multi-server synchronizer. So what does that mean? That means that if I, if I add another site in there, I can synchronize my JSON files. Uh, I've built a little uh, Golang tool, which will write your, um, your server.json and your site.json files. And uh, let's, let's look a little bit at how we get started, and then we'll actually run some of this code. Um, I have a website out on GitHub that has all of this information. So you could get running uh, today or tomorrow or whenever you choose to. And the first thing you want to do is uh, have uh, your AWS uh, access key and your AWS secrets key. And, you know, you have many options for how you want to store it. It's up to you. And you'll need an AMI uh, ID. Uh, this ID is not going to help you, um, but you'll need that. And you'll also, these are the commands that we're going to run to, to get this uh, moving and, uh, and built. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hop out of uh, uh, my presentation uh, using PowerPoint and actually get to do some coding. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to move over here and we're going to go to Visual Studio Code. And this, uh, this is, is what is up on uh, GitHub for you to uh, get started. And basically what we have here, and let's, let's walk through it a little bit uh, before before I jump in with the coding. Uh, when you uh, do a git pull on this from GitHub, you won't have this uh, folder, the .terraform folder. Uh, when you run terraform init, that will pull the latest uh, AWS provider down. And this is also, uh, this is currently built for AWS, but uh, if you have an interest in and using it on Azure or DigitalOcean or something like that, you can always let us know and we'll be happy to, to get that going for you. And over here is our main Terraform file. I'm going to uh, reduce this a little bit so we can, we can scroll through this. Um, I'm using a T3 Medium um, uh, Ubuntu um, instance. And 
what's happening here is uh, I'm just building some tags. I'm saying uh, what I want uh, in the ingress. And over here, if we needed uh, more than one cider block, to uh, access uh, port 22, we would just put uh, a common delimited list of strings in there. And this is for port 80, this is available everywhere. And this is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, for all ports. And I'm gonna build the private key for you so you don't have to go through a lot of uh, uh, rigmarole to build a key. And <clears throat> down here is, I've got a, a, a notes, you know, just, just to help you so that you can, you can grab these and you can uh, copy and paste them. And over here is what I, once I build a site, uh, what's going to come back and everything. And I'm going to drag, uh, give me a second here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to drag this over here for a second to show you. If you notice, we have uh, no sites running here, none. Uh, but not to fear, uh, we're going to get that site running and we're going to take a look. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to run Terraform and Knit. Uh, normally you wouldn't have to do this, but I'll run it. It won't hurt anything. And uh, this will allow us to pull that Terraform folder down if it wasn't there. So it's going through, it's grabbing everything, it's building everything, it's did that. And if we... I'm going to raise this up a bit so we can see a little bit better. I've run uh, Terraform and Knit now. And uh, what I want to do next is uh, uh, create the site. And, oops. I'm going to run Terraform Apply. Uh, uh, dash a u t o dash approve. Oops. Typo. Okay. So when I run this, this is going to uh, reach out to AWS. It's going to feed everything that was in my scripts on the left there to that server. And then we will bring up the server and show you uh, what it's done. And it's creating everything that we need. It's generating our public key and our private key. And I'm going to come over here and I, okay, it's done. I'm going to delete this private, that key there, because I'm going to build it again because I need a new key. So let me clear my screen and let's run Terraform output, which will give us some information that we need. For example, we need this. Uh, let me bring this down a little bit, just a little. All right, let me hop over here to my notes. Now what I'm going to do is take the output of this and I'm going to save it in my home directory here or I could save it wherever I wanted to save it uh, just by putting the path there uh, next to the ssh.key. All right, so there it is. There's my key. There it is. Okay, and what I'm going to do next, hop back over here to notes, and I'm just going to grab this here, copy it, paste it. Oops, uh, let me go home, function home. Okay, function in, and 
This control here is allowing me to uh, set the permissions uh, on this file. Uh, only I will be able to read it and I'm going to go now and jump into, uh, let me bring up my, um, my instances and okay. There's our server running right there. Okay. It's a T3 medium. All right. All right, now I'm going to hop into that server. Just going to copy that, I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to hop over here and grab this guy. And paste it. And I'm going to SSH into that uh, server. Okay. It's asking me a few things. I'm going to say yes. Okay. I am in the server. I'm going to run uh, s sudo su and run as root. I'm going to run clear so we can see what we're doing. Okay, <clears throat> now let's take a look at what's where I am and, and what I'm looking at. Okay, what we have here is a uh, uh, the output of where we are we are at. We're we're in the uh, in the root of uh, root uh, path. Okay, we have a configuration file there for cbmultiwebsites.sh. Uh, and why don't we take a look at that file? I'm going to cat it. CB dash. Okay, let's bring it up where we can take a good, good look at it. All right, so this is a fairly simple file. Basically, what it does is it sets uh, the domain root where I want to put my uh, websites. Um, it sets uh, the script directory, and it also um, sets the location of the file that I'm going to use to create my multi-sites. And <clears throat> once you create your multi-sites, you can work with them. Uh, you can work with them uh, locally. Um, let's say we had a, uh, a development team, let's say four, three or three developers, let's say, and you, each one has a different site that they want to work on. Well, using this approach, we can connect to this uh, site, uh, server rather, through um, Visual Studio Code. Uh, Visual Studio Code has an extension called Remote, which allows you to connect directly to that server. And you say, well, how am I going to see those? Well, you're going to see them by putting the IP and the host name into your uh, local server and you can develop you can upload files you can delete files you can do whatever you need to do so let me hop down here now and come off of this and clear again and let's run uh, uh, lsla again okay so now we are going to create our sites. But before we create our sites, let's see, I've got it in my host file. While I was testing, I created some sites. This IP is going to change, but I'm going to create these sites now so you can take a look at them. So 
Let me come over here. Let's run Vim. And let's open uh, sites.txt. Okay, so we're going to create uh, we're going to create a brad.com we're also going to create a luis.com and we're going to create a george.com all right so those are the three sites we're going to create and now I'm going to hit escape and colon W Q explanation point and save this. Okay, that's been saved. Now what I want to do is run uh, CB uh, multi, uh, multi websites. Okay, we're going to run that. It stops the service first. And what it's going to do next, you can see it, uh, it uh, cleaned uh, that directory and it created those sites. That's part of the synchronization service and you can create sites a la carte if you want to do that and I, I'm going to show you that as well. Um, what it's doing now is starting the um, CB websites service. So let's uh, scroll back up here and let's take a look at some stuff. Let's see where did it go? Okay, let me I'm gonna exit out of here and I'll, I'll hop back in in a second. All right, so let's run a clear and let's run Terraform output. That one. Okay, this is going to tell us the IP. Okay. I mean, I know I could have got it on the server, but I don't remember that command right off the top of my head. All right, so I'm going to drag this host file back over here. Save that file. Move it back, drag this over here, and let's and colon slash four slash there we go, bread.com. There's Brad. There's Luis. And here is George. George. So we got potentially three sites there. Okay. And you say, uh, I want to do something a la carte. Okay. We can do that. Uh, let's hop back on the server and let's uh, create something. And let's create let's create uh, another dash site.com okay so how would I do that um, 
I would type uh, CBWCTL uh, site add another another dash site com. Okay, so this is going to allow us to a la carte ad sites. But before I do run that command, I want to be on the server. So let's arrow up till we come to here. Let's go uh, sudo su. Okay, let's run CSL. Clear. Okay. Now, let me just copy this command, and I'm just going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it. Okay, there it is. So, it's creating another site.com, and you say, okay, where are all these sites at? Okay, so let's, uh, let's run ls uh, minus la. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's cd into var dub dub dub. Okay, let's so they here are our sites. Another site, Brad, George, and Luis. These are the directories that they're in, and you say, well, how can how can uh, all of these sites know that uh, that they should be run under one context? Okay, let's run clear again. Let's um, let's uh, run server.json. Uh, let's cat server.json rather. Oops. All right, there's our, our server.json, okay? Now, here's what's happening. And uh, let's, uh, let's cat this. Let's forward slash etc host plural, oops, host, and Here's what's going on. And if you notice, another site is not in there. And if we, because we have not, we have not um, uh, refreshed or restarted the server. So what, I, what I'm going to do is come back over here, copy a command, and run it. It's just going to – it's just restarting that service. Okay. It doesn't take this long. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Okay. Let's uh, let's clear it. Uh, let's arrow up. See, put that site in there, and our other sites still exist. And you say to me, well, George, I want to create something else under another sites. Uh, I've got something over in GitHub, which is going to allow me to, um, I want to run that. 
So, okay, that's fine. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to CD to another site. Dot com. We're going to ls, look in there. Okay, we got the same index.cfm that we had in these other pages. But in order to uh, pull something off of GitHub, uh, I need to change that. I need to remove that. So I'm just going to remove this. Okay. Oops. It's gone. It's an empty directory now. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here to notes. Let's bring this down a little bit if we can. Yep, there we go. Okay. We're going to come back over here to notes. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this guy. It'll, this is just a sample site on, on GitHub, and it's included in the um, the file. And let's put a period, and it's going to dump all the files right there. All right, so it dumped all those files right there. And what I'm going to do is come over here, and I am going to... Copy this. Okay. I'm going to save that. Move that out of the way. And we're going to bring up this. And we're just going to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash another dash site dot com. There it is. Was that cool? So we can. We could even think about the possibilities here. We could, we could have a list of sites that we needed to create. All of these sites had a repository. We could programmatically create everything and have the ability to very quickly be up and running. Um, very, very cool and powerful um, tool that uh, that we've been able to use and put together. Now, let me hop back over here and show you uh, a couple of other things. Um, let's see. CD. Okay, LS. Sites. And I wanted to show you where the um, where the JSON files were being stored for every site that's created. What does that mean? Well, it means that I can have separate data sources for each site. I can have variables that are only available for that particular site. Uh, it gives me a lot of power. A lot of power. And the cool part about this is none of this is running under um, uh, IIS or Apache. I mean, we're on a Linux, uh, Linux Ubuntu 2204 server right now, but it's not running Apache. It's not running Nginx. Um, you know, you could have a load, you know, you could have an AWS load balancer in front of it if you want it, but you don't need uh, Apache and you don't need Nginx uh, because you have Undertow. And Undertow is a JBoss uh, uh, 
application server, which has all the peach, uh, features and power of the big guys. And a lot of people don't realize or know that. So let's hop into that folder sites dash enabled right now. LS on it. Okay, see, we got a JSON file for every server. All right, let's run clear on it and then we'll we'll cat one of them. So and they're all the same, so we'll be able to to take a look. All right. So we got our host alias, we have our profile, and the very cool part about this is uh our um, our uh, Confusion admin is not exposed. It's locked down. For example, let's just grab this. Let's grab this and let's see if we can hit the Confusion admin. Command box has saved you from getting hacked. And you say, but I need to, to get to the admin sometimes. Well, you certainly can, but the way you would do it is you would have, you could have a bastion server that you spin up and we could hit that server from that bastion server by applying a rule inside of a uh, uh, command box that allowed it to be exposed only to that bastion server. And you say, well, that's too much trouble, too much work. Well, you can control every setting with command box. And today I don't have you, I don't have the time to show you all of that, but if you go to the the command box uh, uh, book, uh, you can see all of it. And that's all available in my slides, uh, which I, I'm going to be happy uh, to show to you. And let's hop back over here and show you one other thing. Uh, clear. Clear that and go back to where I was. Oops. And see Okay. Okay. So we're back where 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 we were. And the cool part about this is if I wanted to wipe the whole thing out, I could certainly do that. And um, let's just take a look at, at some things that are being passed to the command box server. Uh, let's see, cat dot box. Over here, you can add environment variables into this box ENV, and it can get automatically uh, set for you. And it's locked down because of the, the period in front of it. Um, if somebody said, okay, I want to get to that bo dot box dot ENV, they couldn't do it. Absolutely couldn't do it. Uh, but, you know, the cool part about this is, you know, you can use the AWS Secrets Manager to store all of your private keys and use a Java command box module 
to pull those uh, as they're needed. And, um, you know, it, it gives you um, a great sense of security for how uh, you can uh, really manipulate uh, and control uh, what you're doing. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting almost to the end. Let me come back here and... Uh, I want to to finish up these slides and, and let me see if I if this command's going to work if it's going to start from this slide. I think so. Yes. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Here's our um, here's what we did, and basically. This is not hard to do, and the way you bring up Terraform, you know, all you need to do is just Google it or have the uh, Google it in Chat GPT, and it'll tell you how to get Terraform set up. And all Terraform is is a binary file that you are going to use to communicate to whatever provider you want to use. And the beauty of using Terraform is the fact that you are going to have the ability to um, use over 200 different cloud providers. Uh, it's hardly any um, uh, cloud provider that Terraform is not using. All right, so here's uh, some of the um, URLs. This is where you can go to get my Terraform uh, uh, package uh, that I showed you guys. This is where you can go to use a simple site. This is what I, I ran Git clone on. And over here is a good little link to tell you how to uh, connect to and how to uh, install Terraform uh, on every platform. This, uh, this covers every platform. And over here uh, is the link to uh, Command Box Pro where you can check out uh, 